Hi, I'm now going to talk about some issues which affect network availability because clearly not everyone has the same ability to connect to networks. It depends on how much money you've got, depends on where you live in the country, depends even what country you live in, right? Everyone's got slight differences and things aren't totally fair in this regard. So one of the issues is that often things are quite concentrated with cities. This map here is a map of London in the centre and the sort of surrounding areas to London. And if we see in red, that depicts a strong uh, phone signal. So you'd have 4G and it'd be very strong in red. The areas which are sort of going into blue or there's no colouring at all are areas where the phone signal is much, much weaker. And so maybe you'd be on 3G or even not that at all. You might just be on normal cellular. It might be quite slow. You might even have no signal in some of these places. Now, admittedly, none of this on the screen is what we might call a rural area. So a rural area is an area in the countryside. I'm not sure. Well, some of these areas are, I guess, countryside. Uh, not many people live there, though. Close to London, people do always live, even if it's more, more green space. But in some places in the, in the country, there is very, very weak mobile network coverage, meaning you would not be able to create a personal hotspot, meaning you would not be able to download and watch videos in HD, for example, using your mobile phone connection. Now, this has got a lot better in the last 10 years. The government have put a lot of pressure on phone companies to provide more coverage, but it's still not perfect and it's still not totally fair. Likewise, often the phone companies and general internet companies focus on cities because more people live there therefore as an investment focusing on cities is more wise so often you get better infrastructure in cities so for example as 5g is starting to get rolled out it's being rolled out in cities because it needs brand new hardware that's what infrastructure is it's really the hardware user networks your cables your routers your telephone masts all the actual physical technology needed to run the networks it's often put in cities first of all. So this means if you live in the countryside, which is a lot of a country in this case, you are not gonna have access to 5G as it stands. So whether you are in a city or not can be a factor in whether you are able to connect to a decent network, but also there are certain areas in cities or outside of cities where there are what we call black spots. A black spot is where there is no network coverage or a very poor network coverage. And usually it is, to be fair, again in our countryside locations so for example i'm thinking scotland wales the lake district are examples i can think of where there is often a physical barrier so next to a mountain or inside a valley or if you're blocked by some physical obstacle the waves which are produced by say a telephone mast to create the network cannot pass through they, you know they can't pass through a mountain for example it can deflect around and bounce around a little bit but often there are certain areas where you just cannot get a signal because they've not put a big enough mast and so on. Now black spots don't just occur in very remote locations. They also can occur in cities or just anywhere where you've got buildings because buildings clearly are physical objects and have got concrete and steel and stone and that can all interfere and obstruct with your signals. Now that applies to wireless signals. So for example, modern buildings, a lot of concrete, a lot of metal, will block Wi-Fi and block networks like 4G and 5G. So for example, I work in a, a very nice new building in a school in central London, and I cannot get any signal from where I have an office just because the new building uses materials which are just not good for allowing waves through them. Now, also you can have interference. Now interference can usually be caused by other networks. So for instance, in your house, You've got a lot of radio waves and microwaves being produced. So you've got your phone, you've got your laptop maybe, you've got a microwave, you've got other phones, routers next door as well, all of which are producing signals which can sometimes interfere. Now that means the waves get sort of mixed up and it can mean the data gets lost and has to get resent and it can slow things down. So often a very slow network is down to lots of interference and you can try and avoid it in some ways. You might want to change frequencies of certain devices but sometimes in a crowded area, all the signals combine and cause the network to slow down overall. Now, all of these are factors within the UK, I suppose, but also we can think more generally about the entire world. So in the UK, we are in a so-called developed country where we've got good infrastructure 
and a lot of technology being used. But some countries are, or many countries, the majority I suppose, are still considered developing countries. And this map shows how this is distributed. So the US, a lot of Europe, Australia, uh, South Korea, Japan would all be developed countries. And the rest are either developing or the least developed in a sort of reddish colour. Now, in these countries, there may not be a good supply of internet to lots of locations. Often mobile network coverage is sort of prioritised than wired infrastructure. So you would not have fibre optic maybe, but you might have a mobile phone network just running on different technology. Just because it's easier to set up a massive mast for mobile phone networks than it is to run loads of cables everywhere across some of these countries. So clearly if you're living in, say, a least developed country, you might struggle to run a business which requires the internet if you don't have a steady connection. Now to add a bit more context, in some of these, especially the least developed countries, the vast majority of citizens don't have access to regular internet, which can massively limit what they're able to do given how much IT dominates our modern world. So I looked at a study by the UN which estimated that only 19% of citizens in the least developed countries had access to internet in 2019. Only 19% had access to internet. And you can imagine how much that will affect the ability of these countries to become more developed.